Good morning and welcome to part two of my uh, videos from the, the sort of videos from the EV world, but kind of just the car world anyway. This is um, the Ford CEO wants Americans to get back in love with the small cars that Ford gave up on. So we're primarily talking about the USA here, but for context, you need to understand that the best selling car in the UK uh, since, well, pretty much the day it was launched was the Ford Fiesta. And Ford most recently stopped making the Ford Fiesta. So for, for the context of this article, if you want to buy a small Ford in the UK right now, the KA has gone, the Fiesta has gone, and the focus is on the way out. So if you want to buy a small Ford from a dealer in the UK, you've got to buy a Cougar, which is the next best thing, which is basically a mini SUV. It's a lot bigger than the Fords that the brand was founded on. That's all you need to know. This is from thedrive.com. And as I said, we're primarily talking about the USA here. After killing off sedans, that's a saloon car to you and me, uh, and small cars in 2019, Ford CEO Jim Farley is now extolling their virtues and calling on Americans to fall back in love with smaller vehicles. Have Americans ever been in love with smaller vehicles? They've got space, they've got huge roads, and traditionally, they've had cheap gas. That's petrol to you and I. Um, so they've never, the Americans have never really done the whole small car thing like we have in Europe. It's sort of pioneered by, well, the Italians really with the Fiat 500. That's strange, oh, and the British with the Mini. Freudian slip there. That's strange coming from an automaker that phased out small cars to focus on SUVs and pickup trucks, which seem to get bigger every generation. Ford is the preeminent maker of large vehicles in the USA, what with the F-150 consistently being the best-selling model in that country every year. Now, the Ford F-150 is a pickup truck, and a pickup truck is an estate car that's less practical. So what I'm sitting in now is an estate car or a station wagon. It's got five seats, and in the back, I've got a big storage space, and that storage space is covered by a roof and some windows. But a pickup truck does away with the roof and windows so people can steal stuff directly out the back of your car. They've also generally got four-wheel drive, which you'll never need, and they're absolutely huge, so you can't park them anywhere. That's the main difference between a pickup truck and a station wagon. Uh, but now that EVs are the future, we're slowly but surely heading toward, Farley says, America has got to get over the so-called monster vehicles and get back to small cars, as CNBC has reported. You could say that Ford had, outsi had an outsized role in steering us away from small cars and popularising monster models. So Ford are to blame for getting us out of small cars and into big cars, and now he's doing a U-turn, which incidentally is a lot easier to do in a small car. So Farley's statements are a bit frustrating. Just don't read this as a newfound fondness for the kind of cars that dominate markets overseas, such as Europe and China. Even in the USA, Ford rivals like General Motors are seeing success with new smallish cars like the Chevy Trax, which we over here would call a mid-size car. The CEO of Ford told CNBC that bigger vehicles have major weight issues. However, he goes on to explain how this is hurting the production of EVs due to the cost of batteries, saying you have to make a radical change as an automaker to get a profitable EV. The first thing we have to do is put all of our capital towards smaller, more affordable EVs. These big, huge, enormous EVs, they're never going to make any money because the battery's $50,000 and the batteries will never be affordable. <laughs> that is the CEO of Ford saying something that we could have told him 10 years ago. How have we got to this stage? It was so obvious that an electric car that weighs three tons and costs $100,000 is never going to work. It isn't working. The whole thing is failing. I can't believe that we're only just reading this now. You could say, oh, I've read that bit. The CEO of Ford told CNBC that big of it, I've done that bit as well. We'll carry on. Outside America, the best selling EV models are compact vehicles with small batteries that yield comparatively low range. Now that's interesting. The best selling EV models are compact vehicles with small batteries. That bit's kind of made up, isn't it? Because the brand new EVs that sell in the UK are only sold to businesses and they buy the mid to large size ones. Small EVs don't actually sell to consumers, which is interesting. In China, the base model Wuling Hong Guang, I'd love to test drive a Wuling Hong Guang, gets under 100 miles range, although it can go up to around 170 miles. Eh? 
under 100 miles of range, but it can go 170 miles. That doesn't quite make sense. Close to home, the BYD Dolphin Mini for sale in Mexico can achieve just under 200 miles. These kind of small Chinese EVs that Ford and many others are now fearing. Farley added, if we cannot make money on EVs, we have competitors who have the largest market in the world, who already dominate globally and are already setting up their supply chain around the world. And I have already said in videos that the arrival of Chinese EVs into the Western market will destroy the Western manufacturers. And here is the CEO of Ford basically admitting it. And he says, if we don't make profitable EVs in the next five years, what is the future? We will just shrink into North America. Yeah, you'll end up with Ford making two different varieties of pickup truck that's only bought by American people, Ford will have disappeared, much like is happening in Europe. It's almost like there's a big conspiracy going on, but I'm not going to talk anything about that today. Still, it's notable that even in North America, Ford is hinting at the return of small cars. It's unlikely that Ford will ever make models to compete with the smallest Wuling, the Wuling Hongguang. <laughs> Put your Wuling Hongguang away. Uh, and BYD EVs, but at the very least, Ford could once again be embracing small entry-level cars in the USA. Perhaps one day, we might see the electrified return of neat little vehicles like the Fiesta ST, Focus SVT, Escort ZX2, or Probe. Or probably not. Now, that makes a whole load of sense. Give me a Mark V, or do I want a Mark IV? Let's have a Mark IV Ford Fiesta ZTEC S, but an electric one that's really fun. Go on, develop that. I don't want electric cars, but if we've got to have them, I'll have that. Or I'd take the Mark V. Was it the Millennium Edition that was yellow with a black and white checkered roof? Let's have those, but electric with 250 miles range. And like, don't make them stupid quick. It doesn't need to be stupid quick. I don't need to go 0 to 60 in three seconds. I just want to have some fun with it. So basically, what we want is a car from 2008 with 200 horsepower. It's amazing where they've all gone wrong, isn't it? Right, let's have some comments. Comments. It's been a really long time since Americans have loved small cars. Even Volkswagen produces the GTI, I think he's talking about the Golf, as their small car. And it's really not that small. As I said over here, Golf is not. It's not considered a small car. The Miata MX-5, BRZ Subaru and Corolla GR Toyota sell in limited numbers, as does the Z and Supra. And I don't think that's what he's talking about. Modern Corollas and the Jetta are huge. The new Mini is bigger than ever. It's been forever, at least the early 90s or sooner, and lots of our younger generations were not even able to drive in the last era Americans purchased smaller cars. Bring back the Ford Fiesta or something like the Volkswagen Polo. Problem is, small electric is still heavy, and because it's heavy, the range is limited. Good comment. Another comment here. We don't like small cars because most of us don't live in crammed cities. We only buy small vehicles because larger ones cost more or the fuel for larger ones are expensive. It's just not how we as Americans are wired. Notwithstanding the fact that America is built on the car. The reason America has out-of-town shopping and all the highways and the freeways and everything is because the auto industry was involved in shaping the way cities were built and it was all built around everybody owning a car and those cars were huge. Very difficult to undo a hundred years of civilization development when all of that civilization development has been done on great big sedans and station wagons and pickup trucks. You've basically got to rebuild your whole country. What you need is like a great reset. <laughs> Don't say that. Someone then says, bingo. The USA has low fuel economy standards, cheap fuel and parking spaces sized for an expedition. Why would people want to buy small cars? Excellent comment, which basically backs up everything I just said. Last comment. If Ford would learn from Toyota and Honda how to build dependable, smaller, mid-sized cars, then maybe Americans would buy them. Instead, they keep making cars that continually rank low in dependability year after year. So, Ford, what you need to be doing is making reliable, small cars that don't have wet belt engines. Speaking of which, I'm going to be catching up with um, Polly about her Ford Transit wet belt fiasco because she's already began scrapping vans from 2017 because Ford won't fix the engine. Wow, the uh, problems at Ford really are ongoing. So I, for one, welcome the arrival of the cheap Chinese EV to the Western world and I look forward to taking delivery of my Wulong Hongguang. 
and then I'll do a video saying, Jeff's got his Wulong Hong Guang out again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>